property owners and firefighters on the ground, there's nothing more reassuring than the sound of help overhead. But around the world with fire seasons that are starting earlier and lasting longer and with blazers more ferocious than ever before, these angels on high could become a scarce resource. CFA Chief Officer Steve Warrington. We were in uh, New South Wales in September, so they go longer, so they start early and they finish later. Where we traditionally have fires, they seem to be a lot more intense and a lot harder moving as well. So you've got those two phenomenons occurring. And to be fair, this is not unique to Australia. I think last year we had fires in the Arctic, we had fires in China, Russia, Scandinavia. Some of those countries saying to us, we're just not used to having bushfires. What do we do? And reaching out to us, people like us, for help. Unfortunately, it's not new for us. It's quite the norm. What is new is just the intensity and ferocity of some of these fires. Between 2013 and 2019, there were 10 record-breaking heat events in Australia. The latter half of 2019 saw even more records tumble and even greater fire danger. Emergency Services Commissioner Andrew Crisp repeated the warnings of the Weather Bureau and scientific experts. We're expecting above normal conditions for Gippsland, so East Gippsland into, into West Gippsland and then up into the Great Dividing Range. It's about how you plan and prepare in peacetime because you don't want to be battling the fires um, if you haven't done that preparation. But despite months of warnings about an early start to the fire season, Victoria's aerial firefighting capacity remains in crisis with delays, bungled contracts and a decision not to deploy nighttime water bombing until late December. Pilots and frontline aviation experts say the problem in Victoria was caused by late and incomplete contracts and a complex web of fire agencies and government departments all wanting to have a say in what happens with firefighting aircraft. This pilot, who requested not to be named, says too many decisions are being made by people that have no aviation or firefighting experience. The fire season has not snuck up on Victoria. The failure to join New South Wales and Queensland in preparing for an early season has seen fewer aircraft being available. Victoria just doesn't have the aircraft it needs. 3AW693 News. Fire danger ratings have been declared in the Mallee and Northern Country forecast districts. Residents living in fire prone areas within those districts in being an urged to leave now. Move, authorities have told the entire East Gippsland region to leave before fire conditions worsen tomorrow. Isabella Stashkovsky mm. is at the state control centre. When the parched Mallee and Northern Country regions experienced extreme conditions and the state's first code red warning in a decade, only six aircraft were available. Around half of these were at least 40 minutes flying time away and three had observation only capabilities. Victoria's fleet includes two Ericsson Air Crane helicopters. Even though the season is expected to be longer, they will be shipped back to the US from mid-February at the very height of Victoria's fire season. The contract dates which were determined by government bureaucrats also meant that these helicopters sat idle on the ground when the devastating fires in Gippsland erupted. On December 6, instead of fighting fires, one of the air cranes was flown to Avalon Airport to be used as a backdrop for a ministerial media announcement. Hi, Andrew Crisp, Emergency Management Commissioner. Well, it's been a great morning out at Avalon, so we've formally launched our air fleet for this coming summer, this fire season. Again, we've got two of those large air cranes. So even though we're formally launching the fleet today, we know we've already been busy. We know we've got 13 going fire stand in Gippsland, and already today we've got 19 aircraft actually tasked to work on those particular fires. Experts say that Victoria's lack of preparedness has also meant that last season's successful trial of nighttime water bombing has stalled. A situation that frustrates and disappoints firefighters on the ground. You get a nut in your guts every time you hear that helicopter fly off at sunset. The ambos and the police fly at night, so why shouldn't the helitax? They do it in America, why can't we do it here? Approved by Australia's air safety regulator last season, the nighttime trial, which was funded by the National Aerial Firefighting Centre, attacked 13 large fires with nearly 600 water drops. The faster we're on a fire with as many aircraft as possible, the more effective we can be. 
Despite the success, internal government documents show this year's trial of night water bombing operations was originally scheduled to commence on December 11. A rushed briefing paper sent to operators late on December 4 included a long list of reasons why nighttime operations may not be undertaken. Documents also reveal the state government department responsible for hiring the large Sikorsky 76 helicopters from the USA failed to ensure that the contractor's air operator certificate was valid. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority confirmed it only received a new application on December 11. A rescheduled start on December 18 also passed with the crews unable to fly and attack fires at night. This meant that the fires in Gippsland and Lexton in central Victoria were left to burn without nighttime aerial attack. While people in East Gippsland were being told to evacuate, the aircraft finally flew their first night mission on December 29, but they did not discharge a single drop onto the Gippsland fires. This mission was deemed a training exercise. It's no good saying this is what we've always done. The season is longer, fires are burning harder and the risks are greater. New South Wales got it right having a large tanker ready to go year round. Victoria must get serious and fix the crazy bureaucracy. The politics of fire and climate change are nothing new. But with fire seasons around the world getting longer, experts are calling for all governments to rethink the way civilian and military aerial firefighting resources are managed on a national basis. Whatever changes are made, the first must be for Victoria to move to a single bushfire agency managed by people who have aviation firefighting experience. It's also clear that Victoria must heed its own advice and be prepared much earlier so that the firefighting angels in the sky become an ever-present chorus rather than a solo.